Hi, today I'm going to be talking about Japanese saws, or at least about the four Japanese saws that I've been using regularly for several years now. Uh, there are bigger saws, and no doubt there are smaller saws, and you can find more information on those elsewhere on the internet. I can only talk about the ones that I, I'm used to using and know something about. So let's go through them one at a time. So this is the smallest Japanese saw that I use. It's actually a new one, I've been using one very similar to this in the past. It has a flexible blade, uh, very small teeth on one side, slightly larger on the other, cross cut profile and it's for flush cutting. So if I have say a dowel coming through a piece of wood, I can place the blade down, saw off the end of the dowel and I'm not actually cutting into the surface of the piece of wood. Vastly superior to flush cutting saws that I've seen um, from the west. Moving on to the Dozuki saws, these all have backs on them to stiffen the blade and the reason they have the backs is because the blade really is thin and they're for doing joint work so you don't actually want the blade to be flexing whilst you're cutting. So the back stiffens that up. <coughs> it also introduces of course a limitation for the depth of cut. Something to bear in mind. Obviously come in different sizes, this one's a bit larger, a deeper depth of cut on there. Again, the very thin blade. That thin blade actually comes into its own when you're cutting joints. The third one is the Kataba. Now this doesn't have a back, or at least it just has a very stumpy back up here. But the rest of the blade, um, there's no back on it, so you can get very deep cuts out of this. To help with stiffness, the blade is thicker, nearly twice as thick as that on the Dazuki. This one is a cross cut profile, but you can also get rip cut. Now, I use this one for uh, larger joint work and for large cross cutting. The fourth Japanese saw that I use regularly is the Ryoba, easily identified having a tapering blade with teeth on both sides. It's got uh, rip cut teeth on one side and cross cut on the other. Something I've noticed certainly with the ones I've had is that the rip cut teeth start reasonably small at one end near the handle and get progressively bigger towards the tip. So when you're starting the cut near the handle it's a lot easier to get started. Now the cross cut teeth I've always found are a little bit on the small size, certainly compared with the rip cut. But it's a saw where um, the set is the same on both sides, so you can cut really deep cuts and the, the trailing teeth, the teeth you're not cutting with, don't actually mar the work as they follow through. So that could be a very useful saw, very good for long rips, very good for long cross cutting, and also occasionally for some joints, large joints. So those are my four regular Japanese saws. I also have a Kataba that I started with some probably 15 years ago. And I bought it specifically because it was the only pull saw around at the time. Uh, I had a particular job that I could only really do with a pull saw. I didn't know anything about Japanese saws, but I got this. It's a cross cut profile. I had some very tough work for it, uh, which included hardwood and the possibility of striking nails did an awful lot of work uh, on that project and I managed to break one of the tips of or I managed to break a tip off one of the teeth and this is something that has been mentioned in the past that the induction hardened teeth on Japanese saws uh, can't cope with western hardwoods and exotics and that they're brittle well I'm reasonably happy with the performance I've got out of my saws that is the only tooth I've ever broken and I have cut um, some hardwoods, western hardwoods and also some exotic hardwoods without any problem and I think it really comes down to how you use the saw. If you try and force the saw, try and cut too fast then uh, quite possibly you will break a tooth. Now this is 15 years old after that initial hard job and breaking that tooth I knew I wanted Japanese saws and I started getting other ones. 
and I used this for any rough work that came along and it's done an awful lot of work over the years and it's only now just about starting to get uh, a little bit dull so something you certainly do get with induction hardened teeth on these saws is the a lot of life before you need to replace them probably half a, do half a dozen times as much work out of this saw than I would have got out of a western saw before it needed resharpening. Now let's just take a look at how I use these particular saws to do common tasks. Now this was the partially completed tenon from the western saw demonstration. I'm going to be using the Catawba saw. Oh, sorry, I'm not. I'm going to be using the Tezuki saw, the larger one, to cut the other cheek. Now you'll see, because of the back, it's not going to reach down to the shoulder line, except right near the tip. So we'll cut most of the joint using the whole saw, but as we get down to the shoulder line, we'll have to just be using the very end. Now as with western saws, I'm going to use my thumb just to align the saw plate with the work. I'm going to start with a light stroke, so I'm taking some of the weight of the saw, getting everything lined up now I've sawn a little curve right the way across my top line now I'm going to track down this front line so I can see that nice and clearly and I can keep the saw also in this top curve my stance and my position is pretty much the same as for western sawing except I'm slightly further away from the work. Got my feet spread out well, a good balance in the legs, slightly flexed at the knees. As I saw on my forearm, my wrist stays straight, I flex at the elbow and at the shoulder. Once you've got the action right, you can speed up the cut not by putting more pressure on, but just by going faster. Then I can turn this round. And then I can track that line. I can see where I'm sawing and make sure it goes nice and straight. I've raised my shoulder up here because of the angle of the cut. I'm still keeping my wrist nice and straight. And here you see, because of the back, I need to just use the tip of the saw. Come down to my line. And I've got just a little hill in the middle, so I'll square that up in the vise. Just using the area of the saw plate, which is still deep enough. You can cut through right down to the shoulder line. shoulder I would use a bench hook um, obviously for western saw we're pulling so we use a slightly different bench hook it's set up a different way around so it hooks over the back of the bench you might want to use a couple to support something that's a little bit longer just like so set up the cup exactly the same way using a, a thumb just to set the blade in the right place. Establish the line that you're cutting. Settle yourself, good stance, nice and comfortable. So there's a nice clean cheek cut and virtually no effort at all. I'd certainly be breathing a little heavier 
if I'd cut that with a western saw. If we're going to do large um, cuts, for example um, cross cuts or as I am here cutting a piece of man-made material, it's a long cut and the only way to do that with a back saw like the Dazuki would be to have the saw almost level because otherwise the back's going to get in the way, for example like this. But an efficient cut has up to about a dozen teeth active in the cut at any time so you really would want to lean it back at about this sort of angle and then the back's going to stop you getting through your cut. So that's somewhere where I'd use a Catawba saw. I'll start just with some light strokes at the beginning of the cut. I'm lining my blade up as I make these. Now although there's a certain amount of steering you can do as you cut, the best thing is to get everything lined up first of all. I'm using roughly the same stance as before, but I'm standing a little bit lower. I've got the same locked wrist, and it's just the elbow. And in fact, mainly it's just the shoulder that's swinging. Gives me a very decent cut, nice and quickly. A couple of strokes of the plane, and it'd be perfect. I'm using the Ryoba to cross cut through this piece of Sapili. It's um, a softish hardwood, very easy to cut with these Japanese saws. I've already started here, but just give you an idea of, of how, I, how I start the cut. I use my thumb just to press against the side of the saw, hold it in the position where I want to cut. Use the cross cut side and very light stroke. Just gets the cut established and then I can go through for a full stroke using virtually the whole length of the saw. What I've done for this cut is I a rough cut, so I've not marked anything, but I've just cut a few strokes in what should be plumb and I've also gone all the way around the work just putting a little curve in that's as quick as getting a pencil out and marking it those curves just help the saw as well so tracking is not really a problem so I'm now using the full length of the blade Gravity working on the saw and the weight of my arm brings it through the cut. If I want to cut more aggressively, I just go faster with my strokes. Because I'm putting the work almost vertically down onto the, the saw bench, you know, there's very, virtually no clamping needed. need to rip cut this, this piece so I can show you ripping with the Ryoba at the saw bench on top of my workbench again. Very easy again use the thumb just to position the saw. A few light strokes. Get the cut established. start from the other end and meet my cut in the middle. Alternatively I can clamp it in the, uh, the face vise. wide stance, I'm still over on the left hand side of the saw, simply swinging that arm backwards and forwards.
please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe and follow me on social media for extra photos and videos from the workshop. Cheerio!